In this tutorial, you'll see how to create a dimensional abstract sculpture with paper clay and how to use reactive metal paint. Let's begin by creating the clay horse sculpture. Here, I'm positioning the primary pattern on top of a large slab of paper clay. To get this slab, I combined four 16 ounce packages of paper clay and then used a rolling pin to roll and flatten the clay to a thickness of a little less than one half inch or 10 millimeters. It helps to lightly dampen the surface of the clay with water in a few places so that the paper pattern will stick and not slide around while you're cutting. Now I'm using a cutting tool to cut out the horse shape. This is a clay cleanup tool and it has a pointed tip on one end and a curved tip on the other. If you have an old X-Acto knife or a craft knife, those tools will also work for cutting clay. The pointed tip of the cleanup tool is not only great for cutting, it's also helpful for lifting and removing sections of clay after they've been cut. Once you've cut around the entire pattern, begin removing the extra clay and store it in an airtight container so that it will not dry out. Use wet fingertips to smooth any rough edges. For the main section, roll out another slab of paper clay and dampen the surface so that the paper pattern will stay in place. Use the cutting tool to cut around the pattern shape using the same process as before. In order to give sections of the main a curved dimensional look, I'm placing glass bottles and other cylinder shaped items under individual sections and carefully wrapping the clay over them. You can experiment with objects having different diameters to get the amount of curvature that you want. Now I'm cutting the remaining pieces for the sculpture from a third slab of clay. This slab is the same thickness as the previous ones, slightly less than one half inch thick or about 10 millimeters. It's a week later and the shapes have air dried. I'm using a 220 grit sandpaper to smooth some remaining rough edges. If there are any cracks or breaks on any portions of the sculpture, you can use additional wet paper clay to patch and repair. I'm removing supports from this section and using 220 grit sandpaper again to smooth rough edges. The narrow curves can be fragile, so use care when sanding. I'm using a strong epoxy glue to assemble and attach the sculpture parts. Gorilla Clear Epoxy works really well, and so does JB Weld Clear Epoxy, which is what I'm using here. It comes in a syringe, which dispenses an equal amount of epoxy and hardener. Mix them together, and when blended, apply to the pieces and press in place. The epoxy will set in about six minutes, but it's best to give it a few hours to fully cure. 
For adhering the flower petal shapes, it's easier to flip the sculpture over and attach them to the back. Now it's time for paint. I'll be using Modern Masters Bronze Reactive Paint as well as a blue patina aging solution. Here I'm beginning to brush on the first layer of bronze paint. Prior to this, I used more paper clay to fill in the gaps between all the pieces of the sculpture once the epoxy glue was completely dry. What makes this paint special is that it has actual metal particles mixed into the formula. That causes the paint to develop an authentic patina when the aging solution is applied. I'm pouring the Modern Masters Blue Patina Solution into a dish and I'll brush it over the entire surface of the sculpture. The product directions say to apply the solution onto the paint while it's still wet, but this first coat of bronze paint is already dry in places, so I'm going to see what happens when I brush it onto the dry paint layer instead. Over the course of a few hours, the acid in the solution will react with the bronze paint and start an oxidizing process and that should make the sculpture look like it's been left outside and exposed to the elements for decades. Gloves, mask, and protective eyewear should be worn to protect your skin from coming into contact with the acid solution when applying it. After 15 minutes, you can begin to see a little reaction taking place. And after a couple of hours, a nice blue patina has begun to develop in several areas. Here, I'm experimenting to see what will happen if I apply a second layer of paint directly on top of the patina. So I'm covering the surface again with more bronze reactive paint. This is how it looks the next day. The bronze paint that I brushed on top reacted with the dried patina solution underneath and the sculpture now looks like old tarnished metal. Now I want to find out what happens if I use a spray bottle to apply the acid solution onto the bronze paint while it's still wet. So I'm applying a thick layer of paint to a portion of the sculpture. I've poured the blue patina solution into a spray bottle and now I'm spraying it over the entire surface. After 24 hours, you can see that the horse sculpture has a blackened appearance with some blue speckled areas. And now one more layer of the bronze oxidizing paint just to see what happens. After this last layer, the end result is an antique blackened bronze effect. So depending upon how you apply the paint and the blue patina solution, you can get a multitude of special metal effects. Thanks for watching and enjoy creating.